Supernovae are some of the most astonishing and energetic events in the universe. Occurring in the final stages of a star's life, supernovae release tremendous amounts of energy, capturing the attention of astronomers. When a star's fuel, hydrogen, is depleted, it accelerates nuclear fusion, a process of burning heavier elements for energy production. However, at some point, iron begins to accumulate in the star's core, and the fusion of iron consumes energy instead of producing it. In this case, the star's core collapses under its own weight, forming an extremely dense structure. This collapse of the core is the beginning of a supernova explosion. Supernovae are divided into two types, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 supernovae occur when a star, previously called a white dwarf, receives a transfer of matter from a companion star. This transfer causes the white dwarf to reach a critical mass, and a rapid chain of nuclear reactions occurs in the core, triggering a supernova explosion. Type II supernovae occur in the final stages of massive stars. These stars cannot sustain energy production as their hydrogen is depleted, eventually leading to core collapse and explosion. Type II supernovae explode with greater energies, and during these explosions, the outer layers of the star are scattered into space. Supernovae contribute to the formation of new elements in the universe. The enormous energy released during the explosion leads to the synthesis of heavy elements, which are then used in the formation of other stars and planets. Therefore, supernovae are the fundamental source of the universe's chemical richness. In addition, supernovae provide an opportunity to observe the death of stars, which is difficult to determine at cosmic distances. Moreover, the observation of supernovae is also important for understanding the formation of black holes. Some supernovae can also turn into black holes due to the complete collapse of their cores. This process compresses the core due to the effect of gravity and creates a black hole. Supernovae play an important role in research conducted to unravel the mysteries of the universe and better understand the life cycle of stars. Before we talk about the exciting possibility of a star turning into a supernova in recent years, let's talk about the Orion constellation where this star is located. The Orion constellation has been regarded as a fascinating figure in the sky throughout human history. Associated with the story of Orion the Hunter in mythological tales, this constellation is located in an easily observable position that can be tracked throughout the year. Orion is known as a powerful hunter in Greek mythology, and the shape of the constellation is represented by the bright stars on Orion's shoulders. One of the most striking features of the Orion constellation is the Triple Orion's Belt. These three bright stars named Alnitak, Alnilam, and Mintaka make Orion's belt a visual focal point in the sky. At the same time, these three stars can be used to determine the position of many other stars in the sky. As for his shoulders and feet, which earned him the title of Hunter, the star representing the western shoulder of the Orion constellation is Betelgeuse. This bright red supergiant is a prominent point of the constellation. Betelgeuse is a very large star and has a brightness that can be easily noticed even with the naked eye. The star representing the eastern shoulder of the Orion constellation is Bellatrix. Its name means female warrior in Latin. Although Bellatrix is a relatively smaller star, it is still quite bright and one of the characteristic features of the constellation. The star representing the western foot of the constellation is Rigel. Rigel is one of the brightest stars in the Orion constellation and has a white-blue color. It attracts attention with its high brightness and plays an impressive role in the appearance of the constellation. The important star representing the head of the Orion constellation is Mysa. Mysa is a star located approximately in the middle of Orion's shoulders. Its name is of Arabic origin and means bright or beautiful. Mysa, like other stars in the Orion constellation, is a very bright star. Its appearance is in white and blue tones. The brightness of Mysa marks a distinct point in the sky in the head region of Orion. This star is one of the characteristic features of the constellation and is an important reference point for observers. Mysa, representing the head of the Orion constellation, is considered an element that further enhances the mythological and visual appeal of the constellation. This bright star in the sky is a piece that emphasizes the majestic and impressive appearance of Orion and attracts the attention of observers. 
When his head, shoulders, feet, and belt are combined, Orion's hunter appearance is complete. The Orion constellation also contains many interesting celestial objects. M42, also known as the Great Orion Nebula, is one of the best known and brightest nebulae. This magnificent nebula reveals a structure containing young stars, gas, and dust during star formation. In addition to the Great Orion Nebula, a series of nebulae and open star clusters, also called Orion's Sword, are located in this constellation. These celestial bodies attract the interest of astronomers and amateur astronomers and offer an important research area for understanding the nature of the universe. Observing the Orion constellation, watching the dance of bright stars in the sky, and traveling in the depths of the celestial bodies it contains allows people to witness the boundless beauties of the universe. While serving as a guide in the sky, this fascinating constellation also invites observers to an adventure full of information and discoveries. Now that we understand what supernovae are and are familiar with the Orion constellation, some of you may have guessed our topic today. Betelgeuse, located in the Orion constellation, is one of the most recognizable stars in the sky. Its vibrant red hue and prominent location have made it a favorite of both stargazers and astronomers. But what's truly intriguing about Betelgeuse is its mysterious behavior. Astronomers call it a variable star because Betelgeuse pulsates, expands, and contracts over time. These changes cause the star's brightness to fluctuate, sometimes making it one of the brightest stars in the sky and sometimes dimming it significantly. Betelgeuse is a true giant star with a diameter more than a thousand times that of our sun. If we were to place this star at the center of our solar system, it would engulf all of the planets close to the center, including Earth, and its boundaries would extend to Jupiter. Its enormous size and mass make it a red supergiant star approaching the end of its life. Yes, this giant star is dying, but that's not the only reason the star is so intriguing. Stars die all the time. What makes astronomers uneasy about this is the dimming of Betelgeuse. In late 2019 and early 2020, the star lost a significant portion of its brightness, receding from its former glory in an unprecedented way. Marked curiosity and debate among scientists around the world. Several theories have been put forward to explain the dimming of Betelgeuse. One of them stood out from the others and was later confirmed by the Hubble Space Telescope. Based on Hubble's data, scientists discovered that the star was spewing a large cloud of dust, and the starlight we could see was partially blocked by this dust cloud. The star last went out in February 2020 and has not repeated its cycle since. What we do know is that in late 2019, in an event known as the Great Dimming, the star survived the explosion of much of its inner material. Its surface was moving like jelly on a plate, and it had lost its natural 400-day breathing pattern that had been going on for at least 200 years. Yes, Betelgeuse is still behaving very strangely. One day in the future, it will reach the end of its life and explode as a bright supernova. But no one knows for sure when this will happen, except for a team of scientists. And according to them, the explosion could happen right now as you watch this, or in the very near future. If astronomers had to predict the next star in the Milky Way to go supernova, their bets would most likely be on Betelgeuse. This bright red supergiant, also known as Orion's shoulder, is nearing the end of its life, and its distance to Earth is less than 1,000 light years. How close is Betelgeuse to becoming a supernova, and will we be able to see this transformation? All of this is a big mystery. Astronomers suggest that Betelgeuse could explode within the next 100,000 years. This time frame is short on a cosmic time scale, if not for humans, and this is a bit disappointing for us. But our calculations could be wrong, and this great show could happen right before our eyes at any moment. Hideyuki Aoki and his colleagues from Tohoku University in Japan, in their new study, suggest that the star may be at a much more advanced stage in its evolution, and that the explosion may be much sooner than we think. So what are they basing this on? Of course, on the vibrations of the star. Betelgeuse's vibrations resemble breathing with unstable and overlapping overtones. We can describe overtone as one of the frequencies in the star's internal structure becoming dominant after the frequencies overlap. These vibrations also provide information about the internal structures and matter distributions of stars. 
Following the brightness of Betelgeuse in the last century, astronomers recorded changes in the star's brightness in periods of 2,200 days, 420 days, 230 days, and 185 days. Astronomers generally consider the 420-day up and down frequencies as the primary input and output frequencies and accept shorter cycles as overtones. The two 200-day or six-year period is not usually considered part of these inputs and outputs. These periods are referred to as a long secondary period, a feature of unknown origin that is common in one-third of supergiant stars. If the 420-day period were the primary cycle in Betelgeuse's cycles, Betelgeuse's size would have to be between 800 and 900 suns. However, Aoki and his colleagues point to the fact that this assumption may be incomplete. If the two 200-day cycle is the primary cycle in Betelgeuse's brightness cycles and everything else is overtone, then the star would have to be a more massive star, 1,200 suns in size, wider than even Jupiter's orbit. The larger the size of the star, the further along in its life cycle it is expected to be. Stars like Betelgeuse grow big and live fast. Like the Sun, these stars first begin to burn by converting hydrogen in their cores to helium. Then they quickly convert this helium to carbon. The carbon then burns around the core to transform into other heavier elements. Lighter elements burn in shells, causing the star to swell outward as if it were a hot plasma balloon. Aoki and his colleagues use computer simulations to track the evolution of stars from birth to old age, calculating the vibrations they should see at each stage. They explained that all four vibrations, from the two 200-day cycle to the 185-day cycle, could be found in a star breathing in the late stages of carbon burning. The researchers state that a core collapse is expected within a few decades after the carbon is depleted in the core, which will lead to a supernova explosion. So when will the carbon run out? It is not easy to comment on this, as the rhythmic periods of vibration do not change much at this late stage. Aoki says it is not possible to accurately estimate how much carbon is left in the core right now. We mentioned earlier that the time until carbon depletion is probably less than a few hundred years. Therefore, we cannot say that Betelgeuse will explode tomorrow or in the next 10 years. The researchers claim that Betelgeuse will explode in a thousand years, rather than 10,000 or 100,000 years. If the two 200-day vibration is radial, it creates other problems. Scopic measurements show that the star's surface expands and contracts by about 1.5 kilometers per second. If the star breathes at this rate for 2,200 days, it means that the total diameter changes by 180 times the size of the sun in each cycle. This is a huge change, even for astronomers. Moreover, two 200-day vibrations also affect overtones in the star. For example, the 400-day cycle is not always 400 days. Overtones are expected to lengthen when the star reaches its full size. Likewise, when the star shrinks, the overtones shorten. The researchers expect these changes to repeat systematically every two 200-day cycle, and they find no evidence for this in the long-term light curve, which varies irregularly around Betelgeuse's typical 400-day cycle. As we mentioned earlier, when a star's hydrogen runs out, the helium it contains turns into carbon, causing the star to swell. When all the fuel is consumed, when the remaining elements do not create enough fuel to match their own weight. The core collapses inward to form a solid neutron star and recoils against the flow of surrounding gas, taking the form of a supernova. However, it is difficult to say anything definite about the future of Betelgeuse. The behavior of stars is quite complex and unpredictable. In addition to Betelgeuse making a large supernova explosion, another scenario is possible. Some astronomers suggest that the star may experience an inward collapse and turn into a white dwarf. In this case, the outer layers of the star will be ejected into space, leaving behind a small, dense object. However, this scenario is less likely, and a supernova explosion is a more widely accepted outcome. Astronomers continue their research to learn more about the future of Betelgeuse. Closely monitoring the star with telescopes and other observational tools plays an important role in studying its changes and behavior. This research will provide important data that will help us understand the large-scale events of the universe and learn more about the life cycle of stars.
Betelgeuse is a red supergiant star that is at least 8 million years old. It is believed to be in the final stages of its life cycle as it has depleted the hydrogen in its core. So will we be able to watch the Betelgeuse explosion? If we could live for a few thousand more years, of course we would. Imagine what a magnificent sight it would be, wouldn't it?